So what was it about the Fairburn Flames jersey? Back in the day, I played baseball at Duncan Park, and uh, that's where actually uh, Eric Berry, he played it with the Fairburn Flames. And every time he'd leave in baseball, you know, from T-ball all the way up to like, you know, uh, I was in middle school, I always wanted to play football just because it was so cool. They had the orange uh, flame on the helmet with the blue helmets. That's why I wanted to play because the uniforms were so cool. And, and you could have gone pro in baseball. What was the offer that you got and why did you ultimately turn it down? I know we got one from the Dodgers offer letter. Uh, I thought, I don't know why I thought it was Cincinnati, but it might be, I don't know. I was playing baseball all growing up. High school, I started to get pretty good at it. You know, I was hitting really well. Obviously, I was covering the out center field like 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 no other. But baseball got boring because when I started playing football in seventh grade, I was running back, cornerback. I got to high school, I hit my growth spurt, and they moved me over to receiver. And uh, kind of got good towards the end of that second year, third year, turned it up, and senior year just kept going. My sister was in college, and my mom would send me up to her at Clark Atlanta, and she'd do a little like tutoring if there's some course I might need some help on. She'll you know just help me out or whatever. And then I got to just chill out downtown and see the college life, you know. Just I was like, man, I got to be a part of this, you know. And then and then not only foot was football, you know, taking you know the precedent, you know, baseball was falling behind, but college life I was thinking about too. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to school. So regardless of whatever the the economics of the offer were, you yeah. you knew. Yeah. And not to mention your mom probably wouldn't have let you go anyways. We have a letter from the Dodgers where they wanted him to get involved and get into the draft. They talked to me and I just pretty much told them that Calvin needed to really develop a little bit more socially and he didn't need to be away from home. So I just felt like he needed to be in an environment where that was structured, where he could get a good education, learn more from other people, which he did at Georgia Tech. I remember he got the offer, but then my mom was like, you're going to college. And so there was no question. And, and it was a lot of money, too, wasn't it? It was like a million dollars. A lot of money, but no question about college. Zero question. Zero question. So tell about being uh, 12 years old and the class assignment where you wrote about your future. You know, I didn't even know about this until I went home recently and she showed me this letter that I wrote. And it was like, whoa, like literally like spoken into to, to life. I sat there and read the letter talking about, you know, want to be a professional athlete and do things that are able to, you know, help people's quality of life and stuff like that. And I'm like, wow, that's exactly what we're doing right now. Was, was there something that you said in the, the letter that kind of most stuck, or stood I out mean, to you? I, th I think, I mean, yeah, the, being a professional athlete, yeah, we, I, mean, they, I always wanted to do that. But um, to be able to talk about, you know, how, I'm, how we're going to come out here and try to change people's lives and, and create a better quality of life for people. And that's kind of exactly what we're doing right now, you know, and, and continuing to build. Yeah. And your mom had initially resisted you playing football, but it was mm -hmm. something about that letter that opened her up to the possibility, right? I don't even remember what it was, but yeah, she said I couldn't play until I got to seventh grade. And, I, you know, from when I was... You know, shoot, however young I was, it felt like that took forever just to get to seventh grade because I wanted to play football so bad. And then the first day playing football, I wanted to quit. <laughs> because everybody's hitting you. Well, yeah, because we had a stupid hitting drill. Like, I'm running down the sideline, and then there's like a D lineman coming down at an angle, crashing me, like on the, just tackle drill on the sideline. I'm like, they don't do that. I'm like, where do you do this? <laughs> oh, and, and so tell about the Butterfinger dubbing? My 10th grade year, I got moved up to the to varsity. I was trashed my first two years. They called me Butterfinger, so I couldn't catch a cold. And they put me in a game, and I remember I like dropped like a couple balls, just hit me right in the hand. This is a big letdown. I think we lost that game. It, like if I feel like if I would have caught those balls, we, we would have easily won the game. Could have been like big plays and stuff like that. And everybody started calling me Butterfingers, 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 until I started making some plays the next year. But, and, and it was a joke, but it really wasn't. It was a joke, but it wasn't. Yeah, right. Do you think going through that experience where you were dropping the passes and people were giving you a hard time? helped ultimately in you oh, yeah. having success? 100% because it's just, you know, all those times it's just like, you know, you get used to people, not used to it, but, you know, you understand that, you know, people are going to be mean, people are going to say stuff, but it doesn't affect what you're doing. You know, it doesn't affect how you keep on living. You know, it doesn't affect what, what tomorrow's going to bring. Because tomorrow could be a totally different day. It just depends on, you know, how you approach it, what's your mental, what your mental's like. And you mentioned that throwing the football into the chain link fence. Um, if you could, just to explain mm -hmm. the work ethic that's responsible for the success that you achieved. Yeah, man, it's just, I saw my dad, you know, you know, grinding day in, day out. I saw my mom go from, you know, 
flight attendant to school teacher to school administrator to now having her minister's license. So it's like anything you want to do, you can do it if you put your mind to it. We're working until I'm not dropping nothing no more. And that's why I said I put that, that chain on that fence. And all I did was go out there and just throw it away, catch it. Throw it away, catch it. And then just try to work those hands, just work on the quickness. It's just whatever I see, you just got to be real with yourself too. Whatever you see you need to work on, you got to attack it. What about uh, sacrifices that forces you to make in kind of pursuing your professional dreams? It would have been hard for me to have a family during that time because I don't know how I could have, you know, you know, put all the love into the game and then put all the love into a family at home and, and, and still be able to, you know, take care of my body, get in my, my hyperbaric chamber, you know, get all my body work done, and then come home with a wife and like, hey, while she's putting the kids down to bed, you know, so every day. So it's just, just using my game ready, my compression, just thinking about all the things I did on a daily basis, like I wouldn't have time for family. You gotta be selfish with your time. Even if you do have family, you're gonna have to be selfish with your time. Your wife is gonna have, I mean, like coaches' wives, like that are in good marriage, there's some real OGs because, and you got family and kids because the wife is holding down the household. Right, and probably in coaches at work from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., you know what I'm saying? So that's every that's like a daily thing. And probably impossible to have success at everything or at least all at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you see Tom Brady do it, but it's not really <laughs> like him. <laughs>